Hi there. Happy International Microbiology Day. I'm Ken Yoshida, the famous ambassador to Japan. As you may know, the 17th of September is International Microbiology Day. During the last two years, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we had to call off all in-person events. Therefore, we celebrated the International Microbiology Day with 24 hours of live streaming of online presentations. But this year, the situation is turning back to normal, more or less. The in-person events gathering many people take place in some countries. However, unfortunately in Japan, we are still in the middle of the seventh wave of infection. Thus, we decide to do an online talk show like this to let you know the microbiology in Japanese cuisine. And uh, as you may know, Japanese cuisine, washoku in Japanese, has been officially recognized as a UNESCO intangible uh, cultural heritage. Now, let's watch a film about washoku to remind you how Japanese people are proud of it. So let's get started. で、私にとって和食とは想像力をかきたてる料理です。これ以上の美味しいもんないからね。やっぱし和食があってんじゃないの？日本人は<笑>顔色いいだろ。<笑>一言で和食と言ってもその幅広く楽しめる。天ぷらです。寿司がそばです。<笑>うどんです。満腹。満腹。もう天然の違いますがやっぱり。お寿司。一貫で見せるっていう素晴らしいなと思います。うん、芸術ですね。一瞬でなくなるから芸術ね。会社で洋食で引退はないですよね。和食しかないですよね。ほとんど和食しか食べないんで、日本酒も和食の美味しいだと思ってるし。<笑>それは伝えていくべきものですよね。次の世代に伝えることです。<笑>料理を学ぶきっかけは、親父が寿司屋なんで、親父の背中を見てです、ね、あの日本料理を。いや、あのやっぱり日本料理は材料の味を生かすっていうのがまずポイントで、やっぱり日本自体がやっぱり恵まれた国なので、素材がやっぱ本当に美味しいと思うんですね。日本人の食の心作っている生産者さんの気持ちをなるべくその料理を食べられるねあのお客さんに伝わっていけばいいなと思いますけれどもいただきます<笑>和食伝統的な家庭のお味日本の宝物和食とは人類の宝です
So, how did you like uh, this film? Do you get to be impressed? I hope so. And today we have two guest speakers. One is Professor Yamada from Tokyo Institute of Technology, who is the genome analyst. And another person, the, the other person is Mr. Sawada from a company called Gurunabi. So, uh, <laughs> Professor Yamada, <laughs> could you please introduce yourself? Okay, thank you for the introduction. And then my, my name is Takuji Yamada, and then I'm working in Tokyo Institute of Technology. And then I am a, my expertise in bioinformatics. And then re recently I'm working around human gut microbiota. And not only for those, but I am also working for the fermented foods or bacterial fermentations or those kind of things. And I'm very happy to have uh, this kind of, uh, to join this kind of uh, event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Yamada. Mm -hmm. So, next, uh, Mr. Sama uh, Sawada, please. Yep. Okay, I'm Kazunori Sawada and working at Guru Navi. And I'm a research scientist of the collaboration research of Tokyo Tech and Guru Navi. I'm an expert in fermentation. And thank you for having me today. Thank you very much, Brilliant. So, I have heard this uh, company. Grunavi and uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology got a strong tie to work and analyze the microbes used in Japanese cuisine. And I've heard you are working with the Koji mold. Okay, this is a specific fungus microorganism used for Japanese cuisine in many ways. Oh. And uh, uh, but for the first place, let me introduce what is Grunavi company that. <laughs> Mr. Savada, please. Sure. So let me share the PowerPoint slide. So uh, our company, Guru Navi, is originally started uh, providing search, a restaurant search website in 1996. And since then, we get several services like here listed here. It's not all, but uh, part of partially list, but it's uh, we're providing restaurants such website, improving restaurant operation with IT. And we are hosting some contests to award competitive chefs and supporting travelers and the research social food trend. And then well, we, why we are doing like these services is based on one spirit that is uh, sustain and promote Japan's vibrant food culture. So we really appreciate Japanese food culture. And as you see in the movie, it's we believe that Japanese food culture is a treasure of mankind, a pretty big word, but we believe that and uh, to, you know, to achieve that, uh, to appreciate that uh, value, uh, we're doing our services. So let me explain a little bit more. So why we're doing these kind of services is that like providing restaurants to your website and improving restaurant operation with IT. That is because restaurant is where food culture develops. It's kind of a front line or frontier of the Japanese food culture. So we help a uh, restaurant to, you know, to be popular or easily find a restaurant. And the second one is uh, hosting a competition and awarding competitive chefs. That is chef creates new movement of food culture. So, and then another one to support the travelers. Well, imagine when you make a trip, like business trip, vacation, whatever, Maybe you go somewhere like see the castle or mountains, see beautiful sceneries. Then what do you next? Probably you wanna eat something local food. And then, so food is kind of major content of travel. So that uh, we're supporting travelers to you know, navigate where you go, where you should go, and what should you should eat or like that. And then the last one is researching social food trend that is that means that recording a history of food culture so this 
our services uh, businesses are based on the spirit so sustain and promote Japanese food culture and then based on these uh, these uh, businesses what we want to achieve is here um, satisfying people and creating connections so we believe the power of food and food culture um, so we want to you know broadcast what is good about food uh, Japanese food culture to the world so that we're doing our several businesses and then now we've we've doing several businesses but what we can do next what we need to do and then we can to think science science could empower Japanese food culture as we've seen the movie maybe you've noticed that uh, why Japanese food culture is good is there's some list for the reason and then one of them is said that Japanese food culture culture is healthy well yeah it's it could be healthy it, it's kind of impression but it's real difficult to actually prove it's healthy or not to or to measure health healthiness so but science can do that science can give evidence for the food culture so we can to think that we need to start science to empower Japanese food culture then uh, we have a lot of several encounters and a coincidence we came to meet uh, Professor Yamada and then this is the beginning of our collaboration research of Tokyo and Guru Nabi how is it yeah, thanks, uh, Vivian. Yeah. It sounds like uh, you had started like a Michelin uh, guide, but later on, I it was seriously uh, to turn into a uh, cultivation of uh, the, uh, the uh, richness of the culture in the Japanese side. And this yep. is impressive. And finally, you decide to work with scientists to yes. have uh, the more realistic analysis yep. and also to the enrichment of the historical achievement okay that's great yes right thank you thank you yeah. <laughs> so then uh professor yamada so could you please uh, tell us about the theme of the collaboration and maybe you can mention also about uh, how this japanese cuisine requires microbiology in it okay okay so as someone else mentioned about the Japanese cuisine is a very, you know, regarded as a very healthy. But as a scientist's point of view, so we want to, you know, prove. I mean, uh, we want to, you know, just uh, this. We want to just say that the Japanese food culture or Japanese food cuisine is a uh, really healthy. And then that is uh, that is one thing we all uh, we used to thought about it. And then uh, actually uh, the in the beginning of the the uh, my scientific career i working around the human gut microbiota and then the human gut microbiota is kind of fermentation it's a kind of fermentation inside of our body so the uh, i am just i am very interested in the kind of the the movement or working the the uh, the playing role of the bacteria community and that's why i just want to note that the uh, uh, the microbial functions in the other one of the community. Then, I at the time at the, maybe in two two thousand twenty uh, two thousand sixteen or something like that sixteen, and uh, I have a I have a chance to talk to the uh, the the one of the founder of the Gunabi, and then he and then he also uh, he is kind of uh he also graduated from the tokyo tech and then we have uh we talked to each other about the uh, japanese food things or microbiome styles all those kind of things then we decided to have a kind of collaboration working uh in between tokyo tech and the kurunabi and then uh what is the main theme the to decide the main theme, main topics to tackle together 
And then we just decided the Japanese food and then for the fermentation uh, of the the fermentation point of view of the Japanese food culture or the food cuisine. Then we can try to tackle to the to search or research what is the most important things for the Japanese food culture. And then that was a koji mode. Then uh, I am a biohematics people and because data analysis. So we just try to do what kind of things we can do. Then we can try to tackle to the koji genome structure, those kind of things. But the most difficult point is that you know, to get the Koji strains from the industrial for the same, because the Koji mode is one of the very in important, you know, kind of treasure in Japan. So it's very hard to get the strains from the industrial uh, companies or industrial aid scenes. But the, I, I was uh, I was super lucky because I. And then and when I go back to my hometown, Kyoto, and I, I have a chance to talk to my old friends, then there's a one guy who is running a kind of the Koji starter shop. And he was, he is, he is also owner. That is a, a one big chance. And then we, I, I got to get to uh, one Koji strain to decide the genome structure of the Koji strain. That is the kind of study, what is the kind of starts, uh, the story to start this project. So we have a Koji strains, and then we have a kind of the founders of the research, <laughs> the Grunabi, and um, one of the expertise in the scientists, as a scientist, then we can start to get some science background of Japanese food culture, Japanese for, for uh, food culture, the fermentations, by Koji. Mm -hmm. Wow, sounds great. Mm -hmm. It is a good mixture of tripartite scales. Mm -hmm. One is a science, the other is business, and finally your friendship. Wonderful. <laughs> connection, connection. Yeah. Okay, so then... Uh, Who connects people? <laughs> uh, exactly. Right. So, uh, Professor Yamada, maybe you can uh, introduce your friend running this uh, hostel shop, please. Sure. And then I have a uh, the inter I had an interview to my old friend and uh, one of the collaborators now, and he is running a Koji Sara shop, and that is big history in Kyoto city. And then, so please, please show that kind of interview together. Right, so we can play this film again. <laughs> では、え、本日はどうもよろしくお願いします。よろしくお願いします。東京工業大学の山田です。本日は種小路屋さんのえ、インタビューということでちょっとお話を伺いたいと思います。よろしくお願いいたします。えっと、一旦あの自己紹介
使用、最近ちょっと入って使用工事、うん。あとは一部、パンを焼くときに、逆種といって、まあ、麹を使うこともあります。へえー、なるほど。まあ、あとは、漬物で、麹漬けっていうのにも使ってます。ありがとうございます。まあ、日本食にとって非常に重要なあ位置立ち位置をとっているかなと思うんですけれども、はいえー、もう菱六さんがやられている業種として種麹、まあ、もしくは種麹屋さんという職なんですけれども、はいはい、種麹というのは一体何なんでしょうか、はい、あのさっき見せたのはまあ麹で、まあ、麹を作ろうと思うと、まあ、種麹というのが必要になります。で、種麹っていうのは、えー、言葉で言うと、えー、麹菌を、えー、麹作りの際に巻きやすいように加工したものです。えー、例えば、えー、こういう、これ緑色の麹菌なんですが、うんまあ、それをお米に生やして、えー、蒸したお米に直接作るという形や、まあ、あと大量に作るのであれば、まあ、こういう、えー、粉の商品、えー、麹菌の胞子に、えー、増量剤、えー、っていうのを混ぜて、えー、機械サンプルをして、えー、一度に10トン、15トンの工場を作るというような、えー、時に使う。大きく分けて、まあ、2種類あるんですが、まあ、要は、麹菌を、えー、大量に、えー、手軽に使いたいっていう時には必要なものかなと思います。うん、なるほど。では、その種麹屋さんというのは、それを維持するという立ち位置ですかね。はいはい。で、まあ、麹菌も他の微生物と同じように、まあ、基本は、えー、まあ、スラントに、まあ、保存するのが、まあ、一般的なんですが、えー、例えばヨーグルトだったら、スラントから、えー、菌を取って、まあ、ヨーグルト、えー、牛乳の中に、ごろごっと混ぜて、えー、温度かければ培養できるんですけれども、えー、麹菌の場合は、さっきもちょっと言いましたが、蒸したお米に直接、えー、培養するという形態が多いので、ちょっとそれが難しいんですよね。えー、試験管からちょちょっと放射を通して、それを、えー、1トン、2トンの米に、えー、まんべんなくつけていくっていうのは難しいので、うんうんまあ、日本の場合は、まあ、種工事だというのが存在をして、えー、その試験管から、えー、使いやすい形に、さっきの、えー、米粒に生やした状態だったり、えー、粉にした状態のものを作って、えー日本酒のメーカーや水屋さんたちが、まあ、すぐに使えると、まあ、そういう状況まで作り上げるというのが種麹屋の仕事だと思っています。ありがとうございます。種麹屋さんは、はい、という形態をとっているのは日本だけなんですか、はいまあ、おそらく日本独特のものだと思っています。なるほど。では、海外で種麹もしくは麹を利用されるときは、まあ、そういう機会がそもそもあんまりないのかもしれないですけれど、はい<笑>はい、そういうときは七六さんや日本の種麹屋さんから買われるんでしょうか、まあ、買われることが割合としては多いと思いますし、まあ、あと、まあ、種麹をメインで使うより前は、えー、桃麹法というのがあって、以前作った麹をえーまあ、少し培養の伸ばして、まあ、胞子をたくさんつけて、うんまあ、それを、えー、次蒸した原料にまくということもやり方としてはあるので、まあ、もしかしたら海外の醸造屋さんは、まあ、ちょっとやり方としてはラフになるんですけど、まあ、そういうので何とかやってられるところもあるとは聞いたことがあります。日本はかなりじゃあ独特な進化を遂げているそうですね。多分はまあ日本人の気質としても、まあ、細やかだというところから、まあ、今は毎回新しく、えー、何か工場を作るときには、まあ種工事、新しい金工事を産出して、まあ、うん、いうのがもう 99.9% のそうだと思う。そういう意味で言うと、日本の種工事、うん、もしくは工事の海外と比較した特徴っていうのは、何かありますか、はいはいまず、あのー、まあ、種麹自身の、まあ、クオリティというか、えー、まあ、種麹の目的っていうのは、えー、まあ、麹菌だけを、えー、培養して、そ、それのみを供給するっていうところがあるので、まあ、純粋な、えー、麹菌の培養物、まあ、種麹っていうのを、えー、供給できているのが現状
かなと思ってますし、まあ、あとは、えー、まあ、麹菌、まあ、麹カビの中に属しますけれども、えー、まあ、アスペルゲル属の中で、えー、カビ毒を出さない安全なものを、まあ、遺伝子的に、えー、選んで、えー、現状を使用しているというところが、まあ、日本の、まあ、少し海外と海外よりは進んだ点なのかなとは思います。ありがとうございます。なるほど。いろいろと特徴のある試みもいっぱいされてると思うんですけど、ヒロクさんとして、はい、その日本の、まあ、日本だけじゃないかな、えーと、種麹屋さんのかっこいいところというか、ここら辺が他、はいまあ、ちょっと違うよと、そういうところが、はい、あの実際の現場で働いておられる身としての、まあ、ご意見などをいただけると嬉しいです。はいあのーまあ、旗から見るとすごく狭いところで仕事はしていると思うんです。うんあのまあ、今回のプロジェクトの、まあ、途中経過を聞いていても、まあ、非常に似通った、えー、性格の麹菌を、まあ、使って、うんえー、ああだこうだやっていると、えー、いうところで、まあ、例えばこれがお酒用の菌で、うんまあ、その酒用の中でも、えー、一般的なものではなくて、例えば出品、えー、カッコンクールで菌床を取りたいときとか。によく使われる。えーまあ、グルコアミラーゼという糖化酵素がたくさん出る。こういう菌を、えー、かなりマニアックな部分ですけれども、まあ、好んで買われる方がいらっしゃったり、まあ、あとは、えー、もう同じように、まあ、お酒で、えー、日本のお酒で言ったら、うん、純米酒とか純米銀醸に使われるように、こういう。まあ、見た目はもう同じ緑色で全然わからないんですけれども、まあ、ちょっと酵素バランスが違ったり、えー、出す酵素の量が違ったりというところで、うん、まあ、はたかめは本当に狭いところですけれども、まあ、そういうところにもこだわってやっているというところと、まあ、あとはこれ、白い菌で、えー、京都の白味噌屋さんで使われているものなんですけれども、まあ、見た目も、えー、緑じゃなくて白っていうところと、うん、まあ、あとは、まあ、酵素立化が穏やかで、えー、白味噌って白さが大事ですけれども、まあえー、他のお味噌とは違って、まあ、とにかく白さを引き立たせるような麹っていうのもあるので、えー、もう一つの種麹の中で、まあ、幅広い、えー、種類の麹を使っているっていうのが、えーまあ、特徴でもあるし、まあ、あとは、まあ、得意先に何らかのパンダ、えー、あれこれ、えー、相談をされたところで、まあ、素早くいい回答ができ、まあ、できたお,かお酒が、えー、思い通りにならなかったっていうのを聞いた、えー、時には、やっぱりちょっと、もうやったなっていう、やってやったっていうような感じがあるかなと。<笑><笑>まあ、ちょっと間接的ではあるんですけど、<笑>まあ、そういうところはあるんですね。なるほど。そのまあ、言ってしまえばこう、クライアントというか、お得意先の要望に対して、はいはいバチ,テキスタバチッとテキスタ酵素力化を持っているような麹をプロの目から選定してお渡しできると。はいそ,うですねまあ、もしそしてその麹をしっかりと経済培養して単一のやつを持っているという、はいまあ、そういうところの強みというところがあるかなと。これはありますね。まあまあ、なかなか新しくこの仕事を始めようっていうのは、まあ、かなりしかない。ちなみに、日本の麹屋さんっていうのは何、どれぐらいあるんですかえっ、ー、と、種麹屋としては、まあ、10軒いくかいかないかぐらい。あ,なるほどであとあの、地方に行くと麹屋さんっていうのがまだ結構あるんですけれども、うんえーまあ、種麹屋から種麹を買って、で、金工事を買って、工事屋さんは工事を作って、うんうんまあ、地域の人たちに工事を売ると。まあ、そういう業態は、まあまあ2000社ぐらいはまだあるんじゃないかな。あ、そ,そうなんですね。すごいです、ねはい。なるほど。全国各地に散らばってます。なるほど。じゃあ、その、金工事屋さんから金工事を買って増やしてっていう、その真ん中、その間におられるディストリビューターのような方々は、うんはいはい、それは、それは海外でもあるんですか海外でも、まあ、例えば、まあ、向こうに住んでいる日本人の方が、まあ、購入されて、まあ、少し海外が、うんううね、発酵食品とかの麹地のがちょっとクールだっていう地域もあるので、うんまあ、そういう方々に、まあ、麹を販売されたり
、あとはその先の、まあ、こういう状況から、みその仕込み方を教えたという方は結構、うんまあ、アメリカ北米中心、ドイツ、ね、イギリスでもいらっしゃるんですね。なるほど。いやなるほど。それはじゃあ、日本の食文化を広める一助になっているというところでね。ありがとうございます。ちょっとまあ短い時間だったんですが、えっ、ー、と本日あの本当に貴重なお話ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。またぜひぜひこれからも、えー、共同事業をね進めていければいいかと思いますので、はい、よろしくお願いいたします。はい、ありがとうございました。はい、right. it was a very interesting interview, and actually So many history as background in on the background of the all those Koji mold reading. But however, this could be a mystery how they can preserve such an precious species in long, long time. And I think that is why, Professor Yamada, you are looking into the genome structure of all those species. So now it's your time to tell about your genome analysis, please. Thank you for this.、Uh, yes, according to the, as、uh, Kishiroku said, that the Koji is a very interesting part.、Uh, the Koji, very, Koji mold is a very interesting kind of creature. The,、uh, it's, a, it's a species. Then,、uh, we, as one of the scientists, we are digging into a kind of genome structure of the Koji mold. Okay. So the For the, the, the reasons we are doing the genome to check the genome structure of the Koji strains, is that there are several reasons. One, one is just, for, just only from the interest. So we just want to see that Koji strains. And then what is the evolution of the, what is the kind of the root of the Koji strains? And on, also, not only for that, we also just want to know the, and the functional capabilities of the kind of things.、Uh, yeah, so this is the three. <laughs> yeah, three Chinese characters, and then one is a human, and one is a food, one is a kind of microbes. And in the, just in the beginning of this、uh, the project, we just make this kind of you know,、uh, figure, the kind of the co collaboration or kind of the mixture concept of the human, microbiota, food, or、uh, microbes itself, and whatever. And as, I, as we show, Uh, in, this,、uh, in this time, the koji is、uh, Asperger's o r i z a i That is one mold, fungus. It's based on the, gut,、uh, based on the Japanese food koji. And then there are several use,、uh, utilizations. For example, sake, miso, and soy sauce, the starter to make those k i n d of foods. And the diverse, depending, they have a diverse depending on the type of the foods. So there are several strains are utilized according to the foods kind. And that is also called a national microorganism. So, because we are very proud of this koji and in Japan. And then, this is also the fundamental role in Japanese food. So, the miso, sake, soy sauce. Actually, in Japan, we eat the kind of foods almost every day. So, that is the, kind of the basic of the, our culture, our, actually, our history. But there are several problems. Because the selection of the koji used the, depending on the exper experience of the craftsman, kind of the master, something like a hishiroku san. And then there are no scientific standards. Actually, there are several scientific standards, but they are th this is very difficult to, to quantify the quanti quantitative standards. That is very difficult in this kind of long history culture. And then only a few domestic koji strains have had their genome completely decoded. Only a few strains there. That's why the we tried to the Koji genome structure. We got tried to get it. And then discovering to discover new capability of Koji, because we utilize Koji for the rice or some foods or, shoy,、uh, or uh, soybeans, but there are several、uh, capabilities, not only for those. And the other thing is application to new function for, 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 to make new fermented foods. So, yeah, this is a kind of challenging, but we want to try to you know, spread the, the, the capability of the coach to not only for the Japanese, Japan, to the world. 
So we try to do the genome analysis of, of comp comprehensive collection of Japanese Koji strains. And then uh, the Hishioku is in, located in Kyoto and the, here. And then we, the strains provided by Koji starter, I mean, the Koji starter shop in Japan, uh, the number of the, them is less than 10 now. But from the, we received strains from six companies in Japan and totally uh, 93 strains we get it. And then we decided all of the genome structure of those and then to check the functionalities of those again as well. And then uh, we try to, you know, do the genome sequencing. And the first way we get, uh, uh, we try to make uh, phylogenetic tree. So this is the kind of tree structure of their, uh, with the Koji strains. And then uh, we may, uh, then we try, uh, this is a, not, this A, A, M, F, H, G, E, blah, blah, that is a kind of a crate, kind of group of the Koji based on their genome structure. And then based on the genome structure, there are, we get some, you know, crate. So the structures, the crate, we, we got it. But this crate is not only from, this not based on the Koji shop meaning that so each crate was class, uh, classified by industrial use industrial use so this is for miso and this is for sake or this is for whatever no not this is for hishiroku-san or this is not for from the other company so inconsistency in this relationship between the phylogenetic positions and uh, this kind of uh mat type that mat type is kind of the female or me, me, male things. Uh, that is also one big issue because uh, the differentiation of those crates was not due to the accumulation of the mutation in one ancestral strain, but to sexual reproductions. So this is a bit difficult concept, but I really want to, sh sh uh, to, to say to the people who know that because I mean, Something like a, like a, just imagine the dogs or cats or the pig and the cow in the domestic uh, animals. They are two, you know, uh, male and a female. And then to for the breeder, they make uh, the sexual reproductions to get, together with the male, fe female and a male. And the Cosimo is one of the domestic animal, no animal, domestic uh, species, creature, uh, livestock, yes. So, but this, yes, actually the Koji is a livestock. And then the Koji starter company, uh, the shop, they tried their breeder of the domestic, of the livestock. Then, uh, but the Koji strain, because based on this genome data analysis, the Koji strain is not have a sexual reproduction. So they do not have a female and a male uh, based on the, 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 breeding, but they are male and female, but they do not have sexual reproductions. That is one point. And then this suggests that sexual reproduction did not occur during the process of domestication by human. So that is also one interesting thing because imagine that the dog and the wolf things. So the evolution of the dog is, uh, you know, it, it says that, you know, we can get uh, a wild wolf to the human community and the human community try to uh, the wild wolf to be kind to the human as one in, in the generation, by the generation. But in this Koji strains, this, this, does not the, this is not the case. The Koji is a, Koji is a, uh, kind of the dog in general, if I can say. The, uh, because wild, wild wolf was a very kind of the bad wolf. And then the dog is kind of the good good guys. And then we can try to make the dog from the wild wolf, bad guy to the good guy. But the core destroyance is a originally good dog. <laughs> that is one story. So this is a very interesting case. Uh, these are interesting things we found in this genome analysis. The, uh, as kind of the root of the cause. And then, but so 
what does that Koji starter shop people are doing? Because the Koji strings is easy to be mutated. So they are try easy to change their phenotype, their you know style or what uh, the functions. That's why the Koji starter try to keep their capability, not to change the other the, the another kind of things. So because the Koji starter, the the Koji itself, they have a functions, and then the missile maker or a choice source maker, they want to keep their food, uh, the taste or the food or those kind of things. That's why they try to keep the Koji starter, try to keep the original functions. They do not want to change. They try to keep the original structure, original style. That is uh, that is one you know uh, important role role of the Koji starter shop, and then. Uh, so this is the sort to reflect the fact that while the Koji starter breeder, I mean breeder shop, they have tried to, uh, they they have protected important genes from the mutation. That is the uh, one uh, import, one interesting uh, things we found that from the Koji uh, genome structure. So there are tons of things we want to say, but you know we need a three days i think so i <laughs> mean so i want to try to stop here and then if you have any questions so uh, I, I i just received that kind of thing here thank you thank you very much professor yamada and uh actually if i got it right from the beginning koji mm. mode has a huge diversity in uh, mm. nature so yes. then all those breeders can select the right one out of them. Then they mm -hmm. keep it original way. So they don't make any mix. They all the time try to make a pure culture of what is desired for their purpose. Okay. Yes. This is one thing. Mm -hmm. And so this is quite different from mm -hmm. like a domestication of dogs or cats and all things mm -hmm. because they mm -hmm. make a breeding, actually make a mix to mm -hmm. produce what they want. But mm -hmm. in this case, for this cozy mold, Originally, they have so many varieties that mm. they can find some good one for them. This is one thing, mm. right? Yeah. And uh, but how they can uh, distinguish good one or bad one? For the Koji, yeah, actually, that's the Koji starter shopkeepers or the masters. They feel the kind of uh, textile or the smell it or just color or shape of the koji when they culture it, they, they can try to see or check the changes or differences in between those. Wow, then amazing, because I imagined probably they make some measurement of enzyme activity and all things to uh, change the quality. <laughs> of course, they, in, in the recent years, they also have that kind of the enzymatic activity or uh, the strength of the enzymes, but you know they have a 300 years history so in in yeah in the history they try they do not have the kind of enzymatic things as well. Great. So, but I think I can imagine to have a brewing sake uh, species. Maybe they require high activity in amylase, mm -hmm. and like a miso species could be mm -hmm. strong in the proteases. Mm -hmm. It's kind of imagine. Mm -hmm. But I think all those ancient people in Japan they can mm -hmm. distinguish all the activity by the looking of the colonies or mm -hmm. smell of the colonies that's mm -hmm. amazing so yeah, this yeah. was inherited mm -hmm. by our uh, father to son or mm -hmm. like this way to i think so oh, oh that's great mm. i think uh, we have a, a famous cartoon that can he can talk to microbes right mm -hmm. uh, like uh, i can just uh, pop out this idea maybe <laughs> Your friend can talk to your fingers. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, stop joking. But thank you very much, Professor Yamada. And uh, so uh, now you said you make a lot of genome sequencing of the mold, cause mold species mm -hmm. to find out uh, some uh, additional or uncovered function with them, mm -hmm. right? So then this mm -hmm. can be usable to have something new because mm -hmm. you said uh, you just make those people, the, uh, the more Koji starter people just select uh, the mm -hmm. right mutants. Mm -hmm. They don't put something new at the moment. 
but mm -hmm. I think your science can help them point out this guy could do something else and mm -hmm. then you can start something completely new. Mm -hmm. And I have heard uh, Sawada's, uh, Mr. Sawada that yep. started something new using uh, all those uh, specific uh, Koji species. Could you tell me uh, something about this new project? Sure. So this project is a new collaboration work with Jagatech, Gurunavi, and Fuji Oil. Have you ever heard of Fuji, about Fuji Oil? Fuji Oil is famous for the chocolate company, for the business use chocolate company, but they are also working on the sustainable food sources like plant-based food. And then one of those, uh, they have um, plant-based soy, fermented soy milk, cheese-like food. That is uh, soy, no, what was it, abami mash. Mm. Probably if there's some samples on your disk, uh, Professor Yoshida Sensei, probably you got, I asked the Fuji Oil staff to send you some samples. Yes, and actually got, I have them. I said I have two different things. Yes. Yeah. So this uh, one. First one, yes. But this I one think is, Mami uh, which is called uh, Mami Maju Mu. Yes. Mami Maju Mu. Yes. Mu is probably the sound of cow's voice. Mu, probably. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. Yes. But it's Mami Maju. It's the original uh, fermented soy milk cheese like food uh, that is fermented by like lactic acid bacteria and then that's the first uh, product of the Fuji oils uh, from its soy milk cheese like food it's really right. long i'm sorry it's because of the regulation of law i can say simply cheese it's cheese like food i'm sorry <laughs> but uh, it's uh, from its soy milk but this food. one doesn't have the koji mold in your side it just says no, a pure no. lactic acid bacteria species right yes yes and then they want to improve umami taste from that uh, original one. Mm -hmm. So we had a collaboration research development project and then newly developed that yeah. one. Yes, this is the second one. Soy, uh, soy, soy Deli Koji, yes. Yeah, Soy Deli uh, Koji. Yes, well. that is fermented by Koji and lactic acid bacteria. So Thank you. So today we have an uh, additional guest here who can taste them. Okay. Yeah. How the younger generation well, uh, feels it. Let's see that. Please come in. So there are three uh, girls who are studying uh, uh, food chemistry here. Yeah. Hmm. Three of them. Nice to meet you. Here. Nice to meet you. And uh, uh, okay, so could you please uh, introduce yourselves? <laughs> Hello. You can be moving masks. Hello, uh, I'm Sarah. I'm a French student, uh, so I'm here now in Kobe for an internship. Yeah, Sarah is from uh, <laughs> Rennes, Bretagne, in France. Actually, wow. uh, her institute is uh, famous for cheese production or all those mm. uh, dairy production. And even mm. Sarah herself has experience in uh, dairy product uh, uh, factory. Wow. Company. So then the best they, they say success. how yeah. she <laughs> finds it is good or not. Yeah. Wow, well, yeah. hope yeah. say good. I'm <laughs> Siho <laughs> I'm a master student. And I'm uh, studying about allergy now. Mm. Yes, so nowadays uh, people are working a lot with the uh, allergy uh, treatment mm -hmm. by uh, nutrient food. And so that's just one of our mm. subjects. And finally. Ah, hello, I'm Fuka Tsuji, and I also study uh, allergy. Okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so, I don't think uh, they have allergy to soybean, but anyway, they can try uh, how it tastes. Mm, that's important. Okay, mm. this one this one is for this uh, koji mold together with lactic acid bacteria. Okay. Are you going to do it? You're going to go first? That one? 
probably <laughs> second. <laughs> maybe yeah, yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Because, <laughs> <Probably. Yeah. laughs> because the color is quite different. This white one is very. Oh, really? uh, uh -huh. It's that it, it looks like a tofu. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can try this. Yes. <laughs> uh, so what 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 you get there over there? That's I can see some bread over yes. there. Uh, we have a baguette. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, in France, uh, to have from much uh, cheese, we need uh, this uh, normal mm. bread. Mm. Mm -hmm. Without bread. We can't eat uh, uh, cheese. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. <laughs> okay. And sometimes we use uh, butter together, mm -hmm. but today oh, to have the, uh, the genuine taste, only this uh, mm -hmm. soybean fromage is uh, tested. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tastes like uh, <laughs> No, it's very soft. Yes, sir? Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the soybean taste is still there. Yeah. How yeah. do you find it, Sam? <laughs> Call somebody from Switzerland. <laughs> sweet. Yeah, yeah. She oh, finds uh, uh, really a sweetness in inside of this uh, uh, mami Oh, really? Uh, oh. So this really doesn't nice. have a fungus, right? So then this is a hmm. pure lactic acid bacteria uh, fermentation. Yep, yep, yep. And you? Oh, you have a good sense. Huh? I super imagine a uh, tofu. Uh, tofu. Mm. Very, uh, silky, silky tofu. So <laughs> super imagine tofu. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, she has a Japanese taste. So that's why she mm. tried to find something uh, mm. familiar. So then she points out uh, like a taste is quite similar to tofu. And you, what do you find it? Uh, I I thought also. Oh, really? <laughs> kino, kino oh, really? Ah, okay. And, uh, oh, still, okay. Uh, soybean taste. Mm. Oh. Mm. Okay. So, uh, so the, in general impression is uh, this is taste like a tofu, mm. but it's good. Yes. Really. <laughs> That's important. That's important. <laughs> they got brownie points. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So then, second one. Yes. Right. Yes, please. This is uh, uh, fermented together with a uh, hoji mold. Hoji mm -hmm. is a uh, uh, fungus. Mm -hmm. yeah. A bit color is different. A bit brown. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it looks like a more vanilla ice cream. Oh, <laughs> oh really? Maybe. maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, why is it? Super nice. Good. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I hope they will give the good reputation. <laughs> um, it's the best never ever had it. <laughs> Can you see the difference? No, yeah. No, you don't see the difference. Mm. 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 Alcohol cider. Cider. Yeah. Cider. Cider means gas water or apple fermented apple juice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so because uh, in Britannia they uh, no Normandy they produce uh, cedo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's okay. cider. Cedo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. So this is uh, uh, the uh, apple liquor, mm -hmm. apple beer actually. Mm -hmm. So she finds it. Maybe I think because of the uh, fungus fermentation produce some acid, uh, different mm. from uh, lactic acid. So okay. those a bit longer chain of uh, carbon can produce mm -hmm. this uh, smell. Mm. Okay, wow. probably. And I already tasted. Yep. It tastes like uh, pretty much uh, similar to Japanese sake. Mm. Mm. But it should be. It's, it's... Using koji. Yes. 
to say about it. And just I wonder, I was wondering, maybe you put some amount of yeast. I don't think so. But mm -hmm. why do you think? So? Why, because why do you think so? uh, uh, this tastes like uh, uh, yeast in it. Ah, really? Uh, so that means strong umami taste? Yes. Ah, okay. Or more enriched vitamin B, for example. Ah. So you can taste the vitamin B. Yeah, yeah. I, I can, can feel it. Because I did a lot of fermentation tests with wow. vitamin B. Wow. Lipoflavin. Mm. Um, this tastes like lipoflavin. But color is not like lipoflavin, isn't it? No, the color is different <laughs> from that. But I think this is coming from hungus. Yeah. Mm. Or some uh, uh, Millard reaction. Mm. Yep. Mm. Sugar. So sugar, sugar and sweeter, mm. much sweeter than the, the last one, right? Um, I think that because of the action of amylase, mm -hmm. of hungus can help more sugar production. Mm. Yep. Then it can change the color a bit brownish. Yeah. And also yes. taste is more enriched because of sweetness. And maybe you have some trace contamination of yeast or something else to make uh, a fermentation partially. Uh, could be. I've never heard of it. Is it from Mr. Yamada? I know. I just want to see, uh, ask to the, 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 the girls. So is it sweet or how, how do you feel it? Is sweet or the other taste you can find? Uh, well, I, I want to uh, have a beanie smell, beanie odor. Mm -hmm. Like you know, last one, you feel tofu, so that means in a beanie smell. How about the new one? Mm -hmm. Do you feel any beanie smell? Mm -hmm. No, yes, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so the first one is more tofu like. Flavor. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But this uh, second one is more something else. Uh, I I guess sake taste like sake mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's be in your door. Taste, but I heard little sake uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I can agree with this opinion. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it can provoke more sake like taste yep. and yeah, this, that's that's very clear indication mm -hmm. like maybe this is mixed with the uh, uh sake kasu it's a mm -hmm. sake cake yep. and, mm -hmm. it's really yeah. interesting so like through the koji fermentation the bini odor will be disappeared that's kind of finding for us because bini odor is kind of problem to the people who eat who live in Europe, European food culture, they are not good at a yeah. mm -hmm. so that or bean. I don't think like this is soybean taste is not that strong. Okay. And already this is cooked, uh, in my impression. Mm. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. this uh, uh, raw soybean is toxic for us, mm -hmm. but it can block the digestive mm -hmm. enzymes. Uh, we can have diarrhea. But anyway, so oh, this one is uh, well cooked, mm -hmm. so we don't mm -hmm. find uh, any um, uh, very strong uh, uh, green mm -hmm. smell of beans. Mm -hmm. That's it's really nice to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you like? <laughs> do you like <laughs> really? <laughs> you don't consume enough. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. It is a very, very uh, good uh, presentation of all those products. Yes, we and learned a lot. One more thing I want to introduce yes. some restaurant. Yes. Probably, people who are so watching this movie, probably some of you interested in this uh, soybean, no, I mean, soy milk cheese. So I want to introduce a restaurant. You can enjoy the dish using the, this uh, soy milk fermented cheese. Right okay. now you can uh, show us or? So, uh, yes, I, I'm gonna play some movie. Okay, please. Okay, okay. so it's in Gotanta, Tokyo. And then the, 
This restaurant is named Tori Lava. Tori is means chicken in Japanese, and lava is a lava. It's a stone comes from the volcano. And then we visit the, this restaurant while the break time of the this restaurant. And I took two students from Yamada Lab. And here, this is a dish using the soy milk fermented cheese. Yeah, they are using this. Probably the same same stuff. And then this is the dish cream cheese of tiramisu. And then looks good. <laughs> Here we go. I'm I'm taking this movie and uh, the focus isn't really good, but I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. And then, okay, so he probably he's a PhD student of Yaman Lab, and he's gonna show you his tramsu. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's doing good. Yeah, and he's gonna eat this one. Oh, still showing me. <laughs> okay. I and mean, she was really serious to find some taste and you know, what what tastes like. And then he said it's he does he does also feel any uh, soy beans in your door, and then they taste good. And then one more thing: this this is not using the uh, soy milk cheese, but that I'm partially uh, helped to select the uh, koji, and then this is the brine pickled koji. Uh, from, uh, this is a chicken uh, processed by the brine pickled koji. And he's also the students from Yamada Lab. And <laughs> he's tasting. Yeah. So we are using the koji uh, for the various dishes. And you can enjoy uh, these meals here at this restaurant. And uh, yeah, we will eat all of them. Thank you very much. And they yeah, it, it's empty. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we enjoy this meal. Thank you. So, uh, like it really, we are in a pretty difficult situation of the COVID 19, so it's pretty, pretty difficult to come to Japan and visit any uh, some around somewhere. But you know, after COVID 19, please come to Japan and visit this restaurant and enjoy uh, soy fermented, soy for you know, soy milk fermented, no, fermented soy milk cheese. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Salada. Yeah. Salada, do you think uh, this can be popular in France? Oh, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, why is it because the vegan uh, makes? Uh, yes, first, and uh, maybe because uh, uh, French people love uh, love to have like little toast and things like this when uh, they uh, do some parties. Uh, they really have a lot of different uh, like cheese or sauce or things to put on on bread. So I think it's really mm. yeah. obviously really I nice think you can yeah. get a uh, big market in France. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. and uh, so you showed us uh, one example of other usage of uh, koji mold to make a uh, cooking. So you showed that uh, this uh, chicken, it was chicken. Uh, soaked in uh, soja sauce or what is it? This is uh, what is you did. This was a uh, koji mold that was grown on the meat or. Uh, no, 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 no. It, it's uh, they're using the brine pickled koji uh, in Japanese, shio koji. Ah, we... uh, so brine pickled koji is used to process the, the chicken, and then that the proteins from the koji will you know break down to the protein and then make it soften, and then you know they add some umami taste, and then they boil at the low temperature and you know, make where we say ham you know ham is made of pork i know but it's ham a chicken ham very good but i we understand how japanese people preserve the koji mold species and keep them in a constant way not to be mixed not to be changeable so that all the time enjoy the same ability of this microbe or the Japanese cuisine. 
And uh, we did not see a more uh, example of the usage of mold. Like uh, we just focus on this fromage thing, uh, cheese things. But uh, do you think uh, there could be any other possibility for Koji mold of, for usage? For example, more international way. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea about that? Yeah, we have several ideas about how to use the coach uh, capabilities because now we are using only the, uh, how can I say, the, the rice or uh, the rice for the mazake, right? And then for the soybeans, for the miso, or those kind of things. But in a theoretically, the koji can ferment whatever if they have a proteins or the, 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 the fibers or those kind of things. So we can try to, I mean, there are not so much examples for those, but we can try to spread the kind of the capability for all of their vegetables or all those kind of things as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So yeah. probably this uh, uh, soybean uh, fromage, soybean cheese could be the mm. first uh, example mm. for the internationalization of the usage yep. of cozy mold, probably. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, Mr. Sawada, do you have any uh, idea about uh, how we can use these microbes for the better life of all, everybody on the earth. Wow. <laughs> That's a really <laughs> big, big word. Well, um, so basically, I, I believe that the Japanese food culture is very you know, based on the fermentation. So that fermentation technology is kind of core technology of the food uh, Japanese food culture. So it's really, you know, great to to be spread all over the world of the fermentation technology. And then if everyone appreciate that Japanese food tech uh, fermented technology, uh, that will be great. But it's, you know, hopefully we have to think, keep keep thinking about how we can applicate this fermentation technology to the other cuisine culture like you know, French culture or North American culture or whatever. So probably there, there should be a way to you know, apply Japanese fermented fermentation culture technology. I don't know. I don't have the answer yet. Uh -huh. still, yeah, still yeah I was answer. just wondering crackpot idea. Like if you can add uh, Koji mode score in the Yugurunavi guidebook, oh. you can judge <laughs> this uh, shop is more Koji mold or less. Ah, uh, well, can yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, um, probably I can say that at this now going project, we have we have planned to make some tour guide to go around the fermented, fermentation food trip. It's mm. gastronomy tourism probably the word gastronomy tourism so that we introduce several shops uh and uh, selling the fermentation food mm -hmm. and uh, this fermentation food is you know really <laughs> how should i say hardcore it's really it's really for the expert experts or mm -hmm. this fermentation food is for beginners so you know <laughs> fermentation food have you know, strong taste and then sometimes people don't like that strong mm. taste and then maybe uh, the weak fermentation is much familiar and preferable for the mm. beginners so we can we are making some tour guide to you know introduce the people who which which fermentation food is good for you and you and you so that that, that would help to you know, to let them know what yeah, you can yeah, take. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes, you can take my uh, crackpot idea of Koji score. Yeah, right, right, right. right. Okay. Ferment, fermentation score, probably. Yeah. I say that, yeah. Mm, it's, it's, we're scoring by ear and the taste, the strongness. Mm. Yeah. Yes, uh, this can be done in the European side as well, like uh, ah, Koji, sure. for example, or mm. Camembert. Uh, they are very mm. strong in the smell, mm -hmm. and some people mm -hmm. can accept. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, I somebody can feel so. because of the smell. Mm. Oh, really? So, you know, oh, that oh. It's, uh, so then uh, I think uh, this uh, score can help them to choose. Yeah. Mm. Okay, thanks. So, finally, do you have any questions to this experts? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> okay, this, this, so this, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> these girls are now more focused on what to eat it. Okay. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's nice. nice. That's nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is a very, very good celebration of uh, International Microbiology Day. Sure. And thanks for all the preparation and the presentations and answering the questions of my silly one, especially. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank it's you nice very day. much and uh, happy International, International Microbiology Day. Day. See you all. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for having us.